episode, we'll be exploring the kitchen of Barnum House and learn about cooking in the 1800s. Imagine a bright fire crackling merrily in the hearth. In the 1800s, this would have been your stovetop and your oven. You could bake bread using a Dutch oven by putting it either directly in the embers or over the fire. You would use a large cast iron arm called a crane and an S-hooks to hang pots over the fire. If you had many dishes cooking, you could also use the skirt of the hearth, which were the bricks around the fire, to create additional cooking space. S-hooks would often be made by a local blacksmith. You could link S-hooks together to bring whatever you were cooking closer to the fire. The first Canadian cookbook was published in 1831. It was called The Cook Not Mad or Rational Cookery and featured recipes along with home remedies. Cooks would often have to rely on recipes handed down by different people. They would adapt original recipes from their homelands to suit Canadian tastes and ingredients. Many 19th century recipes didn't have detailed directions. It would be up to the cook to know what to do based on their own personal experience. For example, this recipe for orange cake, published in the Galt Cookbook, lists the ingredients this way. Five eggs, saving two whites for icing. Two cups sugar, juice of one and a half oranges, one half cup cold water, two cups flour, two teaspoonfuls baking powder. Mix in order given. This makes four layers. Filling, grated rind of one orange and juice of one half, two cups powdered sugar. Beat egg a little, then add sugar and orange juice gradually. There isn't even a mention of cooking time. Although cookbooks would specify certain measurements, these measurements would not necessarily be standardized. For example, if you were cooking in your own home, you might use a cup like this, but your neighbor making the same recipe might be using a completely different cup altogether. If you were lucky, you might have a bread oven in your kitchen. What would a bread oven look like? Well, if you take a look inside, you'll see that the bread oven is made of brick. The bricks would have to get white hot in order for you to bake your bread. You would have to build a fire at least four to five hours in advance and keep that fire burning the entire time. Once the fire had finally burnt down to coals, you would need to rake out those coals to get them out of the oven so that your bread wouldn't scorch. But how would you tell the oven's temperature? You'll notice that there are no dials or electric lights on this oven here. So what you would have to do is you would stick your arm right inside the oven. Now the average cook could hold their arm in the oven for about six to seven seconds, which would be a good temperature for baking things like bread. In the 1800s, recipes mention cooking things in a quick oven, which would be a hot oven, or a slow oven, which would be a rather cool oven. I hope you enjoyed the exploration of the Barnum House kitchen. On the next episode, join Evan to learn about the architecture of Barnum House.